All right, so I recently picked up three different pairs of sneakers from Kith. This was a, a collaboration that they did with Asics that I honestly was very interested in just checking out and seeing because I haven't really fallen into that Asics hype train yet from the last couple of years. It's pretty much in full force right now with a couple of these models, one being the Gel 1130. The biggest one though is being the Gel Kayano 14s. And then I also got the GT uh, 2160s. So I wanted to give you guys a look at all three of these models and kind of compare them because they are very similar looking when I pull these out and show you guys. Let's actually just grab one of each. And so this is the uh, 1130. This is the 2160. And this is the JLK on a 14th. So as you can see, they all look very similar. And this is part of that uh, Kith pack that they ended up releasing. Um, shout out to Ronnie Feig for actually doing such a, a nice job with some of the releases. I like that they have the loyalty program for people like myself that have been buying Kith for a number of years. It's nice to actually be rewarded for that for once. Like with Nike, I've never had that feeling. So I was able to actually go in and cop a couple of these. I got two of them in my wife's sizes since they weren't available in my size. And then I got one of them in my size. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get into it because I want to show you guys uh, the similarities between all of these three models, give you guys a little bit of a history and why I think that these are so popular right now. So first thing to make note of is all three of these models that I have out here are actually retros from like the 2000 era. So uh, we have three different models at three different price points. The JLK Kayano 14s came out in 2008 and are about $150, $160 for this colorway specifically. And also just a little bit of history about the JLK Kayano series in general. It came out in 1993 as the JLK Kayano Trainer. So after 93, they were known as different versions of JLK Kayano. So they were like the TN001, the TN700, the TN310, TN500 for Trainer, I believe. And that changed by the seventh version they ended up being called the VII for this seven. ASICS still makes new versions of the Gel Kayanos and they're currently on the 30th version that my wife actually did a review on my channel in a little bit earlier this year. Next up, the Gel 1130s were released actually in 2008, also inspired by the Gel Kayano 14s and they retail at about $100 now in 2024. This specific colorway though was 110. And lastly, you have the GT2160, which originally released in 2011 and is now around $120 on ASICS website. I'll link all three of the models on ASICS website for those people that are interested in just the base models that they have. The Scarab Kith version though is $140. And also a fun fact, even though all three of these do have gel in them, one is called the Gel Light, one is called the Gel, and one is called the GT. The GT does have gel, and even though it's a newer pair, it doesn't stand for gel technology. The GT actually stands for Guidance Trusted. I'm assuming that the build quality of this shoe makes this more of the stability pair. Anyway, some of the similarities between all three of these shoes, and the reason why I think all three of them are very popular right now is because it is a mesh runner. You have the mesh and the synthetic leather kind of upper components bringing together a nice like spring summery sort of vibe uh, to these models. Mesh runners have been trending from across a lot of brands in the last handful of years. Nike most notably with the Vomero 5s. New Balance has a bunch of mesh runners as well as a bunch of cut and sew leather uppers. Really nice quality stuff over there. Adidas also has some mesh runners out there available on the market and some people are like oh they're copying Asics and New Balance but the funny thing is Adidas has been making mesh runners from obviously the early 2000 era as well. So they've been in the game just as long doing uh, pairs that are being retro now. But I do think that A6 is kind of the most notable one with the mesh runners uh, in mind. Now, as I mentioned, all of them do look very similar. The key similarities between these three models that I have here, very, very simple. You have the mesh upper. It is kind of a dual mesh upper, which is kind of nice. Then you do have the ASICS logos on both sides of the shoe, and they all have different accents and design elements uh, for the overlays, as you could see. But primarily, they're all fairly similar with the upper as well as the liner. And I believe this is kind of a remake from the collab that actually happened with Kith last year. However, this one actually has the Kith branding. Shout out to my friend Jen, who mentioned that to myself, because I honestly didn't know that. Now, all three pairs do have respective branding on the back sections of the shoe. The JLK on a 14 says so right here on the side. The GT2160 has that right on the side as well. The difference being the GT2160 is actually raised and the Gel Kayano 14s uh, are just printed on. And then for the 1130s, it just says gel here on the backside. Now, all three of these do feature the gel technology in the midsole, as you could see prominently here in the black, I guess, color. And you could see on the Kayano 14s, it is more prominent. It has a lot more on the heel does have some in the forefoot. That's part of the reason I'm assuming that this is a more premium model. It's more expensive because it has more gel. The 1130s just has a little bit of gel that's visible in the heel. And then the 2160s have the same thing, just a little bit in the heel section. And as for the traction on the bottom, they do have some similarities as well. Different traction patterns on all three, obviously very unique looking. The Kayano 14s and the 2160s do have this hard plastic uh, panel in the middle of the shoe. That kind of gives you the added support on the bottom. You do have that as well on the 1160s. However, it's not as prominent. And you do have a strip of rubber that actually 
actually extends through the middle. Now I know a lot of you guys want to know which one is the most comfortable and unfortunately I can't give you that answer because I don't know since these are not my size. I did do a little bit of research though and it sounds like the 1130s do feel like the softest on feet out of the three. The 2160s do feel the firmest out of the three and then the gel Keanu 14s feel like kind of an in-between of them. So if you guys agree or disagree please leave a comment. More details always welcome in the comment section. I will say comfort is absolutely subjective though. Some people like the firmer version. Some people like the softer and squishier versions. If you're really interested in like soft squishy and stuff I do a lot more reviews on that on my channel. The Gel Nimbus 26 review is out on my channel as well as the Nova Blast 4. Those are extremely good shoes for like more cushion, more comfort. These are like retros, right? It's like 10 and 12 years, 15 years old. So they're not gonna be as comfortable. These are all gonna be firmer on feet than the new wave stuff that they have out there. But I will say that usually these type of sneakers are just overall generally very comfortable. They're a little bit firmer. They have more stability. They're a lot more functional than what you have in the max cushion sort of category. So as for fit, I got a true to size uh, 2160 and it fits me just fine. I do have a little bit of a wider foot, but if you guys know if these fit true to size or not, leave a comment in the comment section as well. I apologize. I don't have all of the answers since I don't have all of them in my size. I do have like the A6 Gel Light 3s and the 5s and typically like the 3s and the 5s do fit a little bit snug. For me, I like to go up a half a size instead of my normal 9.5. So maybe I go up a half a size in some of these, maybe I don't. So which is the better of the three? Which is the one you should buy? Honestly, it just depends on your pocketbooks, which ones you actually are interested in getting. It's kind of funny because there's like these stigmas to the price points of which is the best because the most expensive one sometimes is the best, sometimes the cheaper ones are just looked at as like the, the lower tiered model. And in this case, I find that true. I would actually get the JL Keanu 14s first. If I could get these in my size, I much would have rather had those because I think that's the better looking shoe out of the three, even though they're all very, very similar. Now, if you're looking for more of a budget friendly option, the 1130s seem to be the one that everybody's going to. The retail price of them are about $100 and they do have some pretty nice colorways available over on ASIC's website. I'll link that in the description. I would say stylistically, I would actually probably take the 1130 over the 2160 as well. I really think unfortunately the one that I got in my size is the one I like the least out of the three. But leave a comment in the comment section which is your favorite out of the three models. Also throwing it out there if you guys want to see a review of the Asics Gel NYC, leave a comment, let me know, drop a like on the video because I would buy that pair and try those ones out. Because honestly, I actually think I like that model better than these three. I think it looks like a really, really solid model. Anyways, but leave a comment in the comment section. Why do you think ASICS is doing such a good job releasing these sneakers and really getting a lot of, of like hype behind the model? I do feel like there is a trickle down effect that we've seen from other brands as well. You get popular collaborations out there like Jound or whatever for the, the Keanu 14s. And then all of a sudden the GR pairs that actually look very similar to the collaborations don't look so bad all of a sudden. And people would rather spend 150 on the non-collaboration than like three, five, six, or whatever hundred for the collaboration version. But I do also feel like these are fairly stylish shoes. And since ASICs is kind of in the front runner of the mesh sneaker market, it's very fitting that these are very popular right now. So anyway, if you guys wanna buy the base models of these, I'll link them in the description over to ASICs. Appreciate y'all for stopping by and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have more information about the sneakers you wanna leave for other people, again, feel free to leave that in the comment section. Have a good rest of the day. Hopefully we'll see you back on the channel for some more sneaker content soon. All right, peace guys.